Hi, this is Travis Harper with University of Missouri Extension, and today I would like to take a few minutes to talk to you about using honeybees for pollination in commercial growing situations. So the first question you need to answer is, do I need bee colonies to adequately pollinate my crop? And the answer for home gardeners is probably not no. There's more than enough um, feral bees, other pollinators out there that will adequately pollinate that crop. Now, when we're talking about commercial growers that may have several acres of a crop that's all blooming at one time, we may not have enough pollinators out there naturally. You know, our feral bee colonies, our native bees, our bumblebees, our orchard bees, our butterflies, things like that have been affected by the same things that honeybees have been affected by disease, uh, parasitic mites, pesticides, all that sort of thing. And we simply don't have the number of sort of native or wild pollinators out there available. So you may in fact need honeybees uh, on your farm to adequately pollinate your crop. Now we're talking about honeybees here and honeybees are certainly not the most effective or efficient pollinators. There are better pollinators out there. But the fact is, is that honeybees are simply the most easy to manage. We have beekeepers that keep them, they're easy to move, they're easy to put exactly where we want them, when we want them. So it really makes a lot of sense to use honeybees as pollinators. So if you decide that you do in fact need bee colonies on your property to, uh, to pollinate your crop, then the question becomes, do I keep bees myself or do I rent some from a beekeeper? Well, you can certainly keep bees yourself and we would encourage you to do so if, if that's something you're interested in. But keeping bees can take a lot of time. Uh, if you're busy as it is already with the other crops you're trying to grow, you may not have time to dedicate all that you need to do to adequately take care of these bees. So in some situations, it may be actually easier to rent colonies from an established beekeeper. So how many colonies exactly do you need? Well, that's highly dependent on a number of factors. It depends certainly on the crop, the time of the year, where in uh, the country you're located, uh, if there are other crops around or other plants that may attract the bees. There's so many things that play into how many colonies you actually need to pollinate your crop. In general, the range is about one to seven beehives per acre, uh, but that is highly variable, of course. For most crops that we grow, especially the majority of crops uh, that we grow here in Missouri, two to three colonies per acre is probably what we need. Now, how much is it going to cost you? Well, you may be sitting there thinking, well, the beekeeper has a place to keep the bees. If he brings to my property, he's gonna get honey. Why should it cost anything? Well, it is a lot of work for the beekeeper to move colonies to a location when they need to be moved. Uh, and the fact of the matter is, is that majority of commercial crops that we're growing are not the best nectar producers. Beekeeper can get higher honey yields from other crops such as white clover. So for him to have an incentive to move these colonies, to take that time, move these colonies to your property, uh, it usually involves some sort of payment for that service. Now, a majority of commercial beekeepers in the United States make the majority of their money keeping bees from pollination services. One of those big crops that needs pollination every year are the almonds that are grown out in California. In fact, more than 80% of all commercially managed honeybees in the entire United States are out in one single valley in California early in the spring pollinating the almond crop. That being said, it can be difficult to find an adequate number of hives close to you when you need them for your pollination. Now for those almond pollination out in California, beekeepers are getting paid $150 to $200 per set or every time they set out a hive. And basically what that means is that when the crop starts to bloom, uh, beekeepers will move colonies into the area or set the hives and will leave them there for a couple of weeks. In the almond growing region, those hives may be set three to four times during the growing season. 
at 150 to 200 dollars a set that's a lot of money that's being made off pollination services now fortunately it's not near as expensive here in missouri uh, we did a survey several years ago and found most beekeepers that were renting out hives were charging about 25 to 75 dollars per set which may be more, much more reasonable for most of our growers. A little bit about the logistics. So a big thing with successfully using managed bee colonies for pollination, number one is timing. So you want those bees brought into your field, onto your crop when it's just starting to flower. If we set the bees too early or too late, then it can cause us some problems. If we set the bees out there too early before your crop is flowering, then those bees will look for other plants that are flowering and they may stay on those other plants instead of pollinating your crop. If the hives are set out too late, then your plants may not get the adequate pollination that they need. Number two is access. The beekeeper needs to be able to have access to your property, easy access for, for moving and unloading and taking care of these hives. These hives are heavy. There's a lot of work involved with moving them around and the beekeeper still needs to make sure that his bees are taken care of and medicated. So he needs to have good access to your property while his bees are on your property. On placement, Placement refers to how far away from your crop the colonies need to be placed. Now, it's certainly true that honeybees will travel, uh, in some cases, several miles to look for um, pollen and nectar. But in the case of trying to pollinate a commercial crop, we want those hives to be located within about 300 feet of your crop. That means if you've got a very large field, you may have hives that are spaced out evenly around the perimeter of your field. And if you have a truly large field, it may also be beneficial to have some hives placed in the center of that field. So that's one thing that you need to keep in mind when you're planting your crop in the spring, am I going to leave access for a beekeeper to get hives to the middle of that field? Number four, also a very big one, uh, is the use of pesticides. If you're going to use any pesticides, if there are any pesticides that are being used on properties around your fields, this is certainly a big concern to you and also to the beekeeper that's moving those hives out there. Many of our insecticides and also some of our uh, fungicides and herbicides are toxic to bees. Beekeeper doesn't want to take those bees out there to have them killed off due to pesticide use. And you certainly needing those bees for pollination don't want them to be killed off due to pesticide use either. So that's a, a big factor that needs to be considered. And then finally, we would encourage you and the beekeeper anytime you're thinking about uh, renting some hives, moving them into a property to pollinate a specific crop, to write up a contract explaining exactly what the beekeeper is going to do, what his responsibilities are, what your payment is, is to him and all those sorts of things. Now, if you've decided that uh, you do need honeybee colonies to pollinate your crop and you've decided that uh, maybe this is more work than I want to do in keeping bees myself, then your option is left to rent beehives from a beekeeper. Now, the majority of beekeepers are small hobby beekeepers. They keep bees on their own property. They never move those hives and they don't have uh, much of an interest in moving those hives. The larger commercial beekeepers that I've re referenced before that do a lot of pollination work, their hives are going to be out in California during the time when you may need them. So that sort of leaves a small niche of the medium-sized beekeepers uh, that remain in Missouri throughout the season, but still have enough hives that they're willing to rent some out. And you may not know of a beekeeper that does that. If you don't, uh, talk to your other beekeepers. If you know a beekeeper in your area, even if it's a small hobby beekeeper, talk to him or her. Uh, surely they would probably know a beekeeper that does this kind of work. If you don't know any beekeepers or if you can't find somebody, then I would always encourage you to go to the Missouri State Beekeepers Association website. That's mostatebeekeepers.org. 
and it has a list of both all the local clubs found throughout Missouri, as well as the officers of the organization. And you can contact your local club or one of the officers of the state organization, and they should be able to put you in contact with a beekeeper that may be willing to rent colonies to you. And finally, if you have any more questions about this process, how it works, any other details, feel free to contact me at any time. There at the bottom of the slide, you can see both my phone number and my email address, and I'd be happy to answer any questions. And that's all for now, and I thank you for your time.